Welcome to the Shamblin' Showdown. I'm here today with the man himself, Judge Barrett Painter. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Hunter. How are you doing? I'm uh, doing good. Before the show started there, we were talking about your old baseball days, That's and I right. thought, we, we shouldn't get deep into this. We need to talk about this <laughs> for the show. That's so, right. That's so first, you played it. Where You said you signed with Lee. I, well, I graduated from uh, Cleveland High School. Cleveland High School. Cleveland okay. High School in 1978. I don't want to age myself, <laughs> but I guess I just did. <laughs> Now, I graduated in 1978 and uh, signed a partial scholarship at Lee University. It was Lee College back then. Yeah. We were the Vikings back then. The Vi I remember that. And uh, played one year there. Uh, coach David McLean was our head coach. Okay. Still good friends with, with uh, David. He's a great man. And then I transferred to UT Chattanooga and uh, didn't play the next year, but... I walked on at UTC, uh, played as a sophomore and a junior, and earned a, uh, earned a partial scholarship sure. there. And in 1982, I'll never forget, it was, uh, we had heard rumblings about the a, a men's sport was going to be dropped. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got called in by the athletic director, the team did, in a room, and uh, it's a classroom and harold wilkes was the athletic director back then and he told us that they were dropping baseball yeah and i thought oh my gosh um you know what am i going to do because yeah. that was my love oh yeah I, I, I loved playing i feel that uh wasn't the biggest guy on the team but i i worked hard yeah and uh and were you fast i was fast and had a good arm see i was not fast but i was a catcher okay. so i could kind of get away with it a little bit but i had a decent arm yeah. myself okay. too but i wasn't fast by any means yeah. i played in the outfield and uh but anyway um i thought about it about what i wanted to do you know my lifelong goal was to make a career out of baseball sure. but i realized me too. By that time, <laughs> yeah. hey, you know, when you're five foot seven, that's and right. weigh about 130 You're in pounds, the same boat I was you're in. You're not going to no. get a lot of looks in the no. major leagues. No, so <laughs> I, I realized then that I needed to go to figure out another path, and that path was to buckle down and, and go to school. So there you I, go. I didn't. And the great thing about it, I was a junior at the time, so they had to honor my scholarship because we had an option of going somewhere else to mm -hmm. play and not having to sit out mm -hmm. or staying, and, and they would honor our scholarship yeah. for our senior year. So I chose the uh, staying in school part. <laughs> well, and, uh, that's a smart move. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed my days playing baseball and, and still still reminisce about those well, days. Well, the first – I played at the University of the Cumberlands in the first uh, probably month we would have to do our times down to first base mm -hmm. and I would get dogged and our, you know, they'd be, our head coach would yell at me to quit big league. And I guess he thought I was just jogging cause we'd hit and then yeah. we'd do our time to first. And that was as hard as I could go. That was as fast as I, and finally he learned, he was like, all right, I'm going to lay off of it. That's his top speed. But I thought I was going to die. You know, I was booking and booking and booking. Yeah. And I'd ask him, I'd say, did I make my time coach? And he'd say, the, the second you make your time, I'll fall over dead. And you'll know that you've made your time. So <laughs> he gave me a hard time. But, but, but we make up for our deficiencies and other areas. Yeah, well, he, he got me one time. He said uh, we were taking a road trip and we were going on the charter bus. And he had, he had hearing aids. And you couldn't tell, but he had hearing aids. Nades. and uh and i had my ear pods air pods or whatever they're called in and uh and i was talking loud and he said they called me sham he said sham my one goal this trip was to not have to turn my hearing aids down and he said we've not pulled out of the parking lot yet and you've ruined that for me so <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a hard time but anyway well if you would give us a little background on how long you've been in the legal profession and then and then how that led to becoming a judge and how sure. how all that happened well you know, I grew up here in Bradley County. Sure. Uh, dad, mom were Harlan and Lynette Painter. Mm -hmm. Dad was a longtime attorney in this mm -hmm. town, uh, worked as city attorney for mm -hmm. over 40 years. So I had, that kind of piqued my interest. I mm -hmm. remember dad taking me to a court of appeals argument. Yeah. I went up to the court of appeals and argued when I was in high school. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So that kind of piqued my interest. But I had... Uh, you know, at one point I thought about being a coach. Yeah. At one point I thought about going into ministry, and uh, but uh, and then my degree was in business finance. Yeah. So once I graduated from UTC, I uh, I worked local here in the rent to own industry. Mm -hmm. uh, started with uh, Tobe McKenzie's company, and uh, worked there as a store auditor. Okay. I would go around to the stores and 
and um, audit the cash and the inventory sure. and make sure everything was where it's supposed to be. And then the, the general manager took a job in Athens, Georgia, and, and, and hired me to do store auditing mm -hmm. for that company. So I lived there for a couple of years in Athens, Georgia. Great town, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're not a bulldog. Yeah, fan. there you go. <laughs> there you being, go. Being a Tennessee the, fan. They it, take that serious they there, take too, it don't very they? Seriously. That's right. Yeah. So you, what you had to do is, and I got the company I worked for had season tickets to Georgia games, so they'd let me go to Georgia games. But if they weren't playing Tennessee, I'd fake that I was. Yeah, a you have fan. to. Yeah, there you go. Now, now your stepson Biscuit, he's a big Tennessee fan, right? Oh yeah. Okay, because I swear I see him, and a lot of times Dustin from. If it's a Tennessee sporting event, I see one of the two of those guys there at yep. those things. So I don't know what it is, yeah. but I played, I played a little bit against Biscuit, even yeah. though he was a little bit older than me too. But Biscuit is Kent Christian, by the way, if you yeah. don't know him by his nickname. Everybody knows him by Biscuit. Yeah. Though, right? <laughs> oh yeah, he was funny. I, you know, I remember one time somebody got hurt or something, and we were playing, and I was a freshman, maybe he was a senior, and he. Uh, uh, it stopped the game for like 30 minutes and he just had like five of us just rolling over there just talking about he had he, it was a good time but but anyways I'm, so. I'm truly blessed Biscuit and Miles yeah Leslie's other son they're great kids yeah so, yeah. yeah I don't know Miles but Biscuit he's always he's a celebrity around here that's yeah, for sure no doubt yeah I uh, that's one thing we should all share in common or being Tennessee fans yeah. I can remember guy I was probably 12 or 13 years old when I first started going to Tennessee games yeah. with my dad. Dad graduated law school at UT. Okay. So he had season tickets there for a while. And, and once I got old enough, <clears throat> I would go up and we'd always get there early because mm -hmm. I like to watch him warm up. And then when I was 14, 13, 14 years old playing, uh, I guess it called Pony League back then, yeah. uh, Steve Benton and Earl Rowan was my, were my coaches. I mm -hmm. played for the Hawks and Steve was one of the managers. Uh, at on the Tennessee football team. Okay. So after the game, I usually took a friend with me. So we'd always go down if they won. Yeah. We'd do that if they didn't. Yeah. Win, but we'd go down if they won right outside the locker room. And once the coaches, you know, did what they do after the game, Steve would always come out. And if he saw me, he'd take me into the locker room. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, it was great. Before yeah. Thirteen, fourteen year old. Oh Tennessee yeah. Fan, you know, back then it was. I can't remember. Uh, or, Maybe Randy Sanders was wow. back. Uh, I remember Pat Ryan. Yeah. I remember Combs Holloway. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so I've, I've been a Tennessee fan for a long, long time. So now, did you go to UTK Law too? No, I went to uh, uh, Cumberland School of Law at Samford University. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so after you got out of the rent to own business, where did you go from there? Well, I, once in Athens, Georgia, the uh, the company I was working for sold, mm -hmm. and they because I was in the doing a lot of their accounting stuff. They said, why don't you go to University of Georgia and get your accounting degree? And I thought, nah, I think I want to be a lawyer. Yeah. So I came back, talked to my dad, uh, and said, I want, you know, I want to go to law school. And he helped me get into law school. And, and uh, he said, you know, I said, if I come back, can I work in your firm? And he went and talked to the partners. And they said, yeah. And so I graduated um, Cumberland Law School in two and a half mm -hmm. years. I went both mm -hmm. summers so I could finish early. And uh, then I've been practicing law since April of 1992. It's going gotcha. to be 30 years. 30, oh, my April. goodness. That's, that's crazy. Uh, that's, that's a long time. You are. Hey, that's right. That is. That is. Wow, 30 years. So yeah. you've, been, you've been at it for a long time, and then you've recently been appointed judge. That's so. right. So kind of give you a background. So I worked for my dad for about 9, 10 years. Yeah. Went to work at Logan Thompson. Worked okay. there for a little while. Why was it Logan Thompson? Uh, I was the Bradley County attorney. That's right. Uh, okay. So in the early 2000s, I, I, I did worked as Bradley County attorney. Back then, it was just a part-time position. Sure. I'd go think I'd go over on Mondays and spend a day over there. And that's what Chris Fryberg does Crystal now. Does. Okay. Crystal's full time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I did. I was Mex County attorney during that time too. So anyway, uh, then I went to work at Chancy Canavis and worked there for several years, and then. Uh, I ran for criminal sessions judge eight years ago, and about that time, uh, Bill Moss had passed away is after the election, and Bill Moss had passed away, who was our former city municipal judge, city court judge, and I 
applied for that through the city council and mm -hmm. got appointed. Mm -hmm. And so I was I was a city judge from like 2014 until last year. Is that full time? That. No, that's part time. Part time too. Yeah, okay, part -time gotcha. Job. Yeah, we do. We had court every Thursday afternoon. Uh, starting at 2.30, and then the third Thursday of each month, we had night court. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I did that for... But it felt like a full-time job, though, a lot of times. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> and I enjoyed it. I, I had yeah. good clerks, and the uh, city has great people. Yeah. And then in March of last year, uh, Judge Swafford called me and said, Barrett, I'm just letting you know that uh, I am retiring her. Yeah. And... Uh, because I had expressed interest with him about running for Sessions Junior yeah. Judge. Because uh, I knew he was going to retire at the end of his term. I yeah. just didn't know he was going to do it early. Sure. And so we went through that process with the county commission. And in June of last year, I was appointed to finish his term out, mm -hmm. which ends in, in December 30th of 2022. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I was thank the, thank the county commission yeah. for showing the confidence in me sure. to to replace Judge Swafford mm -hmm. and finish out his term. So that's how I got to the position of uh, your Sessions Juvenile Judge. Sure. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're back here on the Shamblin Showdown with uh, Judge Barrett Painter and we did a little bit in the last segment there about kind of where where you your path has taken you up until this point now so obviously you announced that you were running again. To, mm -hmm. Where did you do that at again and when was it? The announcement? Yeah, it was at five points, right? Yes, the music. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes, sir. Because I remember, I remember that um, too. Because we had the the party meeting, and you came over to the party meeting after that too. So, yes. give us a little bit of background on that as well too. Well, uh, as far as my announcement, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so like Just, I, like I said, I had talked to Judge Swafford sure. two or three years ago to, to find out if he was going to run again. Sure. And he said, no, I'm going to retire. So anyway, the, the opportunity presented itself. And so I was, my plan was to go, I was going to run for his position in May of May 3rd next year mm -hmm. uh, in the Republican primary mm -hmm. for that seat anyway. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, look, if the county commission sees fit to appoint me, that'd be great because I can get in and start working sure. and, and doing something that I love to do. And, uh, but anyway, so it was, I had it scheduled one Thursday and unfortunately David Jenkins passed away mm. and his visitation was the same day. That's so right. I, I remember that. Out of respect to the Jenkins sure. family, I rescheduled it for a couple of weeks. It was on a Tuesday instead of a Thursday. But anyway, had a great turnout, had an awesome yeah. turnout. Oh yeah. Uh, did it at five points, right? Five I points remember. Museum. Yeah. yeah. It had a great turnout one evening. It was the night of the Republican. That's right. Meeting. Yeah. And I uh, got got everybody through in time so that they could get yeah. the meeting. And uh, but yeah, I made that announcement uh, then, and then I've been came here. God, week? No, it's been longer than that. Maybe a month ago, and made the announcement on the radio mix 104 with Steve. So. I don't know how. I guess Steve, since he's the boss around here, he gets all the announcements first, and then it's like, then we'll come on the <laughs> Shamblin Showdown after that. So, so I still, I'll try to steal them from him if I can and get That's them before. Right. But there's always, you yeah. know, he's got the, he's got, he's the boss here, so he could say we're gonna run that one a little bit later. We're gonna run. Yeah. My, I'm just kidding, but anyway, but I give him a hard time. But yeah. it's a good. You gotta he, listen to your boss. That's right. right. He's the boss. Hey, hey, Steve Hartline at Mix 104 One's the king around here, that's so that's right. for sure. That's so right. he's a good one. I give him a hard he, time. He, uh, my mm -hmm. wife and her sister uh, were on the the uh, radio. I guess Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, Tuesday morning for the empty stocking fund. Okay. Last year, uh, when Steve was sick, Lindsay had approached him about uh, you know her and Leslie coming on the show to help raise money for the empty yeah. stocking fund. And apparently it went great. Yeah. And because uh, those two, you, you don't, you know my wife. And, yes, sir. And my yeah. Sister -in -law, yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. Those two are amazing. Yeah. On the radio. Sure. They they play off each other. They play off. Sure. Students, so they they were able to raise a lot of money, that's and they awesome. did it this year too. Yeah. So, Good for them. Yeah. That that's a great. It. We need to help our children sure. as much as possible. Oh, exactly. Exactly. He cracks me up, too. We usually record in the studio right here beside him. There's a window in between. I don't know if the cameras show up, but there's a window in between. I had Richard Burnett on two or three weeks ago, and, and I was pre-recording, and, and Steve 
I didn't know this till after, but he said it looks like Hunter Shamblin's being held hostage in the other room by, by Richard Burnett. So he gives me our time. But he, he's a good one. He's a good one. So so now you've you've announced you're gonna you're gonna enter back in and and, and run again. How's all that going with the campaign? I know it's really not gotten yeah. Wild. It's 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 going really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a great team on my campaign committee that that's working together. Uh, of course, my wife Leslie. She's her background's in marketing. Sure, and uh, and she's probably as as good of a or better campaigner than I am. There you go. Out because she knows everybody. She's personal and she you know she talks to everybody. Sure. So, but it the campaign's going great. Good, good. Yeah. So you've done that. I know that's a, and I'm still young and I'm trying to learn how it all works a lot of times too. So a committee, I've heard of that being done a lot. Is that just like a few trusted friends that do your help yes. you? Yes. Okay. I have a. As a judicial candidate, we have certain You've got ethics. A different play. In, That's correct. Yeah. We have certain ethics that we have to abide by, judicial uh, campaign ethics. And one of those is we cannot, as a judicial candidate, go out and solicit money. Sure. Okay, so you have to have a campaign committee that actually goes out and funds. But you got to go and raise 100000 oh, plus. It's, it's, it's crazy. I know. Uh, it's crazy. It's changed so much from eight years yeah. ago. Yeah. But... But I've got uh, I've asked you know some friends uh, and uh, some acquaintances sure and we've got a great team together Good. and we're we're really working hard and got our heads down and well it's about to get ramped up I know it it's especially around here it's one thing I have picked up on is it all kind of goes quiet around this time of the year everything mm -hmm. kind of settles down for Christmas and then after New Year's it's a sprint it's isn't a sprint. it it's a that's sprint right. that's right. Well, there'll be, you know, you'll have, and people know that too, because what I think is funny is it just so happens that the kids sell their, uh, uh, their, what's the discount cards at oh, schools yeah. and sports <laughs> yeah, teams yeah. around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if there's election time, they know oh, where to go to, and, to and everybody's got to buy one. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. <laughs> that, Absolutely. I, uh, I don't know how, who figured that out, but it always seems like when there's an election going on, there's somebody selling some yeah. little kid uh, discount cards to school or something like that. Absolutely. But anyway. Way. so 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 after the holidays everything ramps up mm -hmm. and uh when is now you're a may 1st primary may is that, 3rd may 3rd i'm yeah. sorry may 3rd primary the, correct the republican primary okay yes. gotcha yeah. and uh and so you obviously running as a republican um you know kind of give us a little background on uh on your time here and kind of what you've done and where you would like to see the Republican Party go in the future here too. So that's well, I've been a pretty active member of the sure. Republican Party. We uh, see you at the meetings. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, starting in I guess eight years ago. Yeah, yeah I, I started going to the meetings and really wish I'd done it beforehand. Sure. And uh, but I I. Um, as a lifelong Republican, my dad was a lifelong sure. Republican. You know, I, I'm seeing where our country is, and hopefully, we can get it turned around. Sure. But yeah, the the local party's doing great. Sure. Uh, we do great work. Emily does a great job sure. as our as our chairman. Uh, nationally too. In today's world, we got to get conservatives, especially in judicial uh, judicial seat. Or I guess you'd say judicial seats as right. well too. Mm -hmm. um, but we got to get conservatives elected across the board, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing. And, and it's just if we don't start on our local levels, then that's, right. that's where you got to build at. You got to start. Somewhere. You got to build. That's exactly right. And and people don't realize, too, that you affect their life a lot more than the Supreme Court does. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm, I mean? They don't understand Absolutely. that. And your county mayor affects your life a lot more than your president does or your commission. But right. um, but people don't understand it. But. You know, that's the thing, and, and I always try to harp on it, and that's why I think I've developed a real passion for the Republican Party here. You can do good work in your own backyard. You don't have to go be an intern in D.C. or in Nashville. You can do work right here in Bradley County for younger people as well, too, you know, and older people. You can do – you know, I've had people come up and say, we just want to know something that we can do to get involved. You know, yeah, to start coming to the meetings. Coming to the meetings, say, yeah. hey, they give us a hard time in there every now and then, but we can we can take a little heat. That's so right. sometimes right. it gets entertaining, that's yeah. for sure. But no anyway, well, it's been great to have you on, Judge. Today, is there anything else you want to wrap yeah, up with? I just want to say this, Hunter. I um, I love this job. I love sure. what I'm doing, and I feel that the the good Lord's calling me to this job. Since I took the bench October 1st last year, we've made a lot of good changes sure. to the uh, to Sessions Court and to uh, Juvenile Court. 
Uh, I've implemented a centralized calendar system for my clerks and my juvenile staff so they'll know where I am and what court I'm going to be in because I do downtown courthouse and the juvenile justice center. Mm -hmm. And they know what court Magistrate Ivy's going to yeah. be in. If she's either downtown or in the, uh, at, the, in the, at the juvenile justice center. We have on the civil session side, uh, we've reduced wait times for contested cases from six to eight months to six to eight weeks. Wow. So we're getting a lot done. Yeah. Uh, I've got a great staff of clerks yeah. uh, that Gala employs, Gala sure. Miller employs, and we all work well together. We're a great team. Um, we've got, they also do my order of protection court. Order Protection Court's grown so much that we do we do it every other Friday, but we do a, a, a morning docket and an afternoon docket. Sure. I have mental health court that I take care of, and then environmental court. And the clerks downtown really You've got a lot on your plate. Really, yes, we do, and, but they they're great. They yeah. they keep me they keep me. <laughs> so in you mind. have to work a little bit with Tim Mason on environmental That's stuff. Right. Okay, yeah, Tim's Tim. a, Tim's a good, but yeah, he's a good guy. Absolutely. He's a good guy. And on the juvenile side, which is which is really my big passion, uh, is uh, we've done a lot of good work there. Uh, we have on family court, which is our our truancy and unruly cases, non delinquent cases. We do those on Mondays, uh, and then Thursdays is my juvenile delinquent day. Uh, we are we've reimplemented the uh, chaplain ministries for awesome. our kids in detention. Uh, I've talked to Lynn Bowles with the uh, Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation, and hoping to get a meeting with her soon so that we can get more tutors to our children sure. that come through the juvenile uh, juvenile court sure. system to try to help them with their grades well, it's, uh, it's it's key give, yes. to and have i mean give them give them the not only the spiritual support they need with the chaplain but yeah. give them a educational basis you know it really can turn it's, a child's life turn around a child's life around and we've had some great success stories one of the things that I'm really working on right now is my mentorship program. Sure. I've met with both Dr. Dyer, I've talked to Dr. Cash, I've met with Derek Kinsey at the Boys and Girls Club, I've met with, I've talked to Lawrence Armstrong with 100 Black Men, I've talked to Haley Johnston mm -hmm. about being involved in that program, uh, and hopefully uh, at the beginning of the year, I can get a big meeting set up with everybody, school systems and, sure. and all these community people. Uh, to see how this is going to work yeah. and see what we can do to get these kids some mentors because they, they come at, to us at their most difficult yeah. time. And a lot of them don't have moms or dads yeah. that they can look, 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 yeah. look up to or somebody so, they sure. can look up to. So hopefully we can get that program started sure. and that's going to make a big difference. But uh, we are – my juvenile staff, Vicki Towns, my director, yeah. um, and they, she's a good one. Oh man, they're great. They do great work. Uh, my youth service officers that are in the school, because of the way I rearrange the schedule, they have more time to spend with sure. their kids in school, and and to help out our teachers when they need help. And uh, it, it's just been it, it it's been in a year we've accomplished a lot. Yeah. If I can have eight more years, we're going to accomplish even more. And I can't wait to get that started get that progress started get get these kids more help that they mm -hmm. need and uh it, it's just been it, it's been awesome i tell people uh, a vote for barrett painter will ensure that the children of bradley county are not just nameless faceless numbers in the judicial mm -hmm. or the juvenile system but a child who has a chance to succeed in life mm -hmm. and uh, we're really passionate about that both me and my staff so uh I'm asking for the vote in support of Bradley County. Uh, I've had a, a almost a year and a half I would be in office come May of next That's crazy. Year. Time flies, oh, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It does. But I'm asking for the vote in support of Bradley County and uh, so that we can continue the good work we're doing both in juvenile and sessions court and we can really help the citizens of Bradley County and the children of Bradley County. Well, there you go. You heard it here on the Shamblin' Showdown, even though Steve Hartline stole him to come on his show before he could come on this one. But we'll take it. So anyway. Next time, just tell me. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you for coming on, Judge. We really appreciate it. It's thank been great. You. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Hunter.